Okay, um, in your response just now, on two, two occasions you touched on the systemic inequality in the country. The persons in your constituency and in so many other constituencies across the island who can't buy food for three days of lockdown, they are saying this is you carrying the inequality even further because Vernon buys food for the month, but you know the little corner shop in, in Olympic Way. On a Sunday morning, it's full with everybody. I buy two pounds of chicken and two pounds of rice. Yeah, but buy you, for each day. Yeah. Each day. But your government has said to them, you can't do that. So, so you know, which is my, origin, my point I was making to you earlier. The journalism in the country has to go further than just what is common knowledge. Obviously, it's common knowledge that if you lock down, you can't, you know, they, as I was giving the example, of the farmer who has to come in from St. Mary, who sells in Coronation Market. That household that depends on that sale in Coronation on mm -hmm. Saturday, that is gone. So they are not able to stock up like Vernon, who gets his pay on a monthly basis and goes to <laughs> Price Mart and comes out with three or four trolleys. Oh, I wish. <laughs> The, the point, the, the, obviously, we know that. That's, that's you're repeating what we already know. Yeah. What we don't know, how do we stop that from happening? And why do we have to do this? We have to lock down because the persons who are going to the corner shop on a Sunday or a Saturday or whichever day to buy the two pound of rice. The, the, the big gila oil, the half a bread and so forth, and the half a chicken or chicken parts or chicken back. Mm -hmm. Those persons are not wearing their masks. Mm -hmm. They are not social distancing. They may not get ill, mm -hmm. but their grandmother mm -hmm. or an older uncle would get ill. Yeah. And when they go to the hospital, there is no bed there for them or oxygen there for them. And then they go on social media and say, the government wicked, see what they are suffer. Mm. Yeah. Not making the connection. And I'm saying that the conversation that we're having is being very limited. Mm. And this is what I was saying earlier to you, that the management of the information in the pandemic is as much as, uh, of importance as how we manage the health and the economy. Because this infodemic, which is being used to highlight in some cases, which is important, but in an opportunistic way to create social tensions, to create divergence and conflict in the society because of the existing and traditional inequalities and inequities, that that is also a, a, a very dangerous thing in the, in the society, of which the government is very sensitive. And, and I raise it that if we are going to ensure that people wherever in Jamaica can you know, continue with their hustle, continue with their jobs, earn income, and continue with commerce, continue with, with going back to school, they will also have to learn to live with the pandemic, live with the coronavirus, which only moves if people move, which is only transmitted if you are in proximity or you touch a surface where the virus is alive. So it's important that you keep sanitizing your hands. And to avoid the proximity issue, wear a mask. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not rocket science. It is simple public health. And it's not the first that we have had to do this. In many years gone by, when we had cholera and other kinds of diseases, uh, we have had to take similar public health stance. Uh, and we have been successful in that, in hand washing, not spitting on the streets and so forth. We have had to do that. Uh, and we can do it now. We have greater hope that the pandemic will end. How will the pandemic end? The pandemic can end in the natural courses that we have seen in history, where people who did not have an understanding of the public health science behind transmission just went about their business in a normal way, and a significant portion of the population died, and got natural immunity for those who survived. Mm -hmm. Or we can use our heads and take the knowledge that is there and comply with the measures until the storm passes. And it, it will pass if we 
follow these rules, if we don't give the virus any space to move about, to be transmitted, and to uh, infect others. And that is just by changing the wind. For too long, Madam Speaker, we have allowed our country to be misled by persons who claim to hold the mantle of reasonableness in the country. And what has happened is that they have misled, in particular, the poor. Yeah. Madam Speaker, for those persons who are pushing in all forms of media a class war, a social war, the anti-vaccination war, if you get ill today, you go to one of them and tell them, pay the doctor bill for me. You can't find any of them because they push their ideas in anonymity. So, Madam Speaker, we are a free country. And everyone is free to express their thoughts, even if it is, it is unreasonable as long as it is not pushing sedition or libelous. But we also have a duty in this parliament, government and opposition, to speak the truth, to defend reason, and to ensure that those among us who may not have access to information or able to contextualize the information, we have to stand in defense of those people. And Madam Speaker, you will note, and I say it for all, that I am not afraid to speak the truth, even if it is uncomfortable to some, because I too have a microphone in front of me. The strategies that we put in place, Madam Speaker, is at opportune times, especially times where we would not affect commerce greatly, we restrict movement. And that, Madam Speaker, is what you are seeing here reflecting in a reduction in that estimate of infective reproduction. They are not. There are other measures, Madam Speaker, which will bring that R0 even further without the use of general measures such as, as I said earlier, restricting movement, restricting contact. Those measures are wearing your mask, you maintain social distance, and you hand sanitize regularly. The possibility of transmission is reduced. And if we do that all the time, Leader of the Opposition, I'm sure you agree, then that R0 will continue to decline without us needing to put in place the general measures now of limiting your movement and restricting your gathering. And that is a trade-off that the average citizen needs to understand and dispel with the other arguments that somehow we are trying to take away your liberty. We need to dispel that nobody's trying to take away your liberty. We're trying to save your life. Yeah. Wear your mask. Don't take this foolishness, but we're trying to suffocate you. Yeah. If you can't afford a mask, take a old T-shirt and put it around your nose and mouth. If we put in place a curfew, don't bother spew this nonsense argument that we don't want you to party and enjoy yourself. We're trying to protect you and your grandmother and your brother and your sister. Yeah. It's the same set of people who complain when they see the video circulating of the hospital overcrowded and people sitting in the hallways. Yes. Yeah. Can't get oxygen. 
It is as if they have no concern. It is the highest level of selfishness in the society. And we, as the parliament, must never give sucker to those kinds of arguments. We must talk out against that. Because if ever there was a time in this society when we all must be at one, now is the time. Persons who are pushing in all forms of media a class war, a social war, the anti-vaccination war. If you get ill today, you go to one of them and tell them, pay the doctor bill for me. With the other arguments, that somehow we are trying to take away your liberty. We need to dispel that nobody's trying to take away your liberty. We're trying to save your life. Wear your mask, don't take this foolishness, but we're trying to suffocate you. If you can't afford a mask, take a old t-shirt and put it around your nose and mouth. If we put in place a curfew. Don't bother spew this nonsense argument that we don't want you to party and enjoy yourself. We're trying to protect you and your grandmother and your brother and your sister. It's the same set of people who complain when they see the video circulating of the hospital overcrowded and people sitting in the hallways. Can't get oxygen. It is as if they have no concern. It is the highest level of selfishness in the society. And we, as the parliament, must never give sucker to those kinds of arguments. We must talk out against that. Because if ever there was a time in this society when we all must be at one, now is the time. What the pandemic has, has revealed is that we need to reconfigure our society. We need to sit with the stakeholders and say, we can build a new Jamaica, a Jamaica in which your entertainment can be accommodated and if you want to party from 5 a.m. to 5 a.m. the next day, well, let us find a space for you to do that. But you should not be disturbing the nurse who has to get up at 5 a.m. to go to KPH and work. And it is a conversation that we need to have without anybody saying that we're fighting dance hall or fighting this or fighting that. It, it needs to be said. And until you reach the level of social maturity without saying somebody fighting the poor or fighting down this poor man. Nobody not fighting any poor. I am fighting for the poor. I come from 56 Cumberland Road in Spanish Town, right above Graveyard Market. Nobody can tell me about living poor. But what I have seen, Madam Speaker, is that those people who should know better have misled the poor by not telling the poor the truth about what they need to know. So, Madam Speaker, when I say here that this government will invest in dance hall, we will invest in the music and we will invest in the halls. And I have proven that in my own constituency, Madam Speaker. Nobody can't tell me about dance hall and making the investment to create a hip strip where there is an economy around dance art. Because what is, what is happening is that dance hall is being hijacked. Other people are taking our music and making more money off it because the people who are carrying the music not seeing the economic value in the music. So we're gonna take the time now, which we have already been discussing internally. We understand the hurt and suffering. Many have lost significant resources. So we are going to have to make an allocation. I do plan to call in the, the leaders of the industry. And I don't know, I am not designating anyone as leader of the industry. We will put out a call. People who want to come are free to come. Those who are established, we will speak to them. But we want to have an engagement because we see the, our music and our culture as a part of our economic recovery.